Good morning and welcome to a homespun house. It has been so long since we have last seen each other and I have knit a lot in the last, has it been half of a year? I'm not sure, but I have knit so much that I am definitely not going to be sharing with you everything that I knit. However, I'll just be sharing with you the most recent things that I have been working on and completed. And one of those is clearly what I am wearing. This is the porcelain sweater by Lena Holme Samsø. And I absolutely loved knitting this. So I knit this out of our fingering weight, merino cashmere nylon. I used um, antique for the main color. Poppy is that really beautiful red. Gumdrop is that pretty kind of like pinky purple. And then I used Bohemian for the kind of more main panels in the sweater. I love this so much. It is super comfortable. And um, like I said, I enjoyed knitting it so much. It was a lot of fun. And it really got me on a color work kick, which you will see shortly. So before I knit this one, I actually knit the Oxa sweater, which is a pattern by Caitlin Hunter. It calls for a DK weight yarn. And this pattern actually calls for fingering and mohair held double, but I just knit it with fingering. And I think I knit it with a either three or a 3.5 millimeter needle. And I did not knit mine oversized, which is what the pattern uh, calls for, is quite an oversized pullover. I just decided to make mine a little bit more fitted, although it's not fitted. It's just not massively oversized like it shows in the photograph. So then I knit the Oxa sweater by Caitlin Hunter. As I started to say, this is a pattern uh, using DK weight yarn. I again, because I love our merino cashmere nylon, decided to use merino cashmere nylon DK weight and I knit the Oxa sweater. This was a lot of fun. It has a pretty texture around the yoke. And I knit this one a little bit even more fitted than my porcelain sweater. I was honestly very thrown off by these very tiny cables that are called for in the pattern. But I think per X, it's only four rows where you're doing those cables. And this was very simple to do, super easy. Um, and I really enjoyed knitting it, as I said. I think I used just a little bit more than um, three skeins for this. So 400 grams was definitely needed. And as far as this goes, this is a size small. And I used two plus probably five grams of antique and almost none of the other colors. So you could definitely get away with 50 gram skeins if you want. Then while we're on the chat of sweaters, I, as I said, enjoyed knitting the porcelain sweater so much and really fell in love with the rhythm of knitting color work. Um, color work has always been something for me that is very tedious, just very tedious, not relaxing at all. I have in the past really enjoyed a lot of knitting where I can just knit. Knitting for me was something that I did out of pure relaxation to keep my hands moving, to kind of keep doing something and, uh, knits where I had to, like all of these, pay attention to every stitch, other than of course, when I got to the body and the arms. And then I knit on my porcelain sweater, which has these panels of color work. And I realized that I was enjoying more so the panels of color work than I was enjoying just the plain stockinette one colored rounds. That I decided that I loved the fit of this Lena Samsu sweater and I also loved her pattern writing and I really like her design. So I had a look through her sweaters and I loved the terracotta sweater. I thought that was a really beautiful design, but I really fell in love with her Inga sweater purely because it is an all over color work sweater. 
So the Inga sweater is knit using DK weight yarn and it is a raglan style rather than a drop sleeve style. And I definitely like raglan better than drop sleeve. I think honestly, if I were to do this again, I think a drop sleeve fits much better when it is quite oversized. So I would probably knit one size larger than this. Although I'm still happy with this, I think I would be happier with the drop sleeve style being quite a bit more oversized. So the raglan sweater is this here. This is the Inga sweater. Isn't it absolutely stunning? It is so much fun to knit. Um, I am enjoying this so much. So I chose to knit this using two different bases. As I mentioned, it uses just a simple skein of, I think 100% wool DK weight yarn. And I chose our non super wash in the Juniper for the main color. And then for these little diamonds, I decided I'm going to use Surrey Alpaca for the color work. I thought that would add a really fun texture to it, as well as I think it's a really nice thing to wear out on our terrace when I'm sitting and knitting, which I have been doing every afternoon when it's not rainy or windy or in the evenings when we're at our bungalow this spring and summer, we're always up late and are always putting sweatshirts on, cozy sweaters, a blanket. And I think this produces will produce so much comfort because if you look at the inside, it has that like blanket feel to it. I don't know if you can see all of the halo, but I think this is going to be so cozy. So I chose Scandinavia, which is probably my favorite blue that we do. And then I chose Frieden, which is a really pretty kind of seafoamy green blue. And um, I really love it. I think it's so much fun to knit. It has gorgeous short row shaping in the back. So does this one. Much more short row shaping than I think I've ever done in a sweater, but I am so much enjoying it. So I just have a sleeve to knit. I think today I'll pick up the stitches on that and get a good bit of work done on it. But I have been enjoying this so much. And it's been really different because in the past I have knit very tight wrists or, you know, even balloon sleeves that go down. But I've really enjoyed this kind of oversized. I mean, this isn't super oversized, but the the cuff here. I've really enjoyed that. And these ones are quite large. I still have to sew in the ends from the sleeve, but I do have the entire body um, sewn in for this sweater. So I am really enjoying this. And it has been, all of these sweaters have been pretty quick knits for me. Um, I set this aside for about a week, however, because I've been working on other projects. I've knit a lot of socks and I've started two blankets. So those have really um, had my heart. But I think if I sit and work on this, I could definitely get the sleeve finished in two days and have it ready to wear for those afternoons where the sun comes out, it's a little bit warmer, and I can just sit outside with a warm wool sweater and a wool blanket on my lap. That's just been what I've been doing every afternoon with a nice cup of coffee, a cappuccino, and just enjoying two, three hours outside knitting, listening to the birds. It has been so wonderful. So I, of course, have been knitting on lots of socks. And this year we've come out with a new club called Happy Birthday Hogwarts. And each month it features one to three just people of the Harry Potter world, Hogwarts world. And depending upon when their birthday is. So I'm going to share with you all of the colorways that we've done so far. If you haven't received one yet, if you don't want to look, look away now. I'm going to start in order of the clubs that we've done. So the first club that we did was Happy Birthday Luna, and I've knit all of these socks. However, AOD loved the Luna pair, and so she is wearing those today. So this is happy birthday, Luna. There is a lot of yellow in this skein. Now you probably can't see it just because of how it's twisted, 
but these socks were so much fun to knit. I knit them up using blueberry waffle socks and I enjoyed them so much. It came with marmalade, a really beautiful yellow, just because when I think of Luna, I think of really colorful, eccentric. I think of yellow because Luna loves yellow. And I think of, of course, the wedding where Luna and her father wore yellow to the wedding. And um, I don't know, I just think of really bright and cheery and fun colors for Luna. So that was happy birthday, Luna. And all, none of these are in the shop anymore. The only one that's in the shop is not one that I'm going to share with you, which is happy birthday, Draco Malfoy. So his birthday is in June. The next birthday that we did was happy birthday, Ronald Weasley. And for Ron, I think about just this kind of funny hand-me-down, of course, Weasley. I think about his old embarrassing dress robes that he was so embarrassed to wear, his obviously bright red hair, um, his sweaters that his mom knits him for Christmas. And so this is the happy birthday Ronald Weasley colorway. And this came along with um, a really beautiful kind of orangey red as the tonal for that. So this is the first time in a long time that I'm not knitting contrasting heels, cuffs, or toes for these birthday skeins. Why? I don't know. I just thought it would be fun to change it up. I am still knitting socks with contrast. So the next birthday that we had was happy birthday, Remus Lupin. And of course, Remus Lupin, well, not of course, but he's my absolute favorite Hogwarts teacher. I really love him more in the book series. You kind of go more into depth with Remus and you get to know him a lot more. And, and I feel like in a different way than you do in the movie. Had I just gotten to know him through the movies, I don't know if he'd be my favorite teacher. But through the books, I really fell in love with Remus Lupin as a teacher. Not like love crush when I read it at the time, but I just thought he was an amazing person and teacher. And I really enjoyed the kindness that he showed towards Harry. And this is the color that we dyed up for happy birthday, Remus Lupin. This is a lot more of a speckled technique as opposed to kind of a speckled variegated that we did with um, Luna and Ron. And most of the yarns will be this highly sort of speckled yarn. So then the final one that most of you are receiving now or have received is happy birthday, Fred and George. And these are our crazy tricksters in the books and I just thought of bright, vibrant magic, their joke shop that they created, and just all of the crazy nonsense that they get up to. So this is happy birthday, Fred and George Weasley. And this color is so much fun. It's birdie bots, it's all of the potions, it's all of the magic, like I said. And this is the sock set. So it came along with our butternut colorway. And this one's so much fun. I think because it's also so different from the other sock sets and with spring coming and summer, it's just a really fun one to be working on right now. So I'm really enjoying those. And all of these socks are knit using size two millimeter needles, 60 stitches, and they are definitely my take with me socks when I go to any appointments, when we're going to cafes, which we've been having a lot of fun visiting new cafes lately, being outside. Socks are what I take with me. They're quite small, portable, very, very easy. Um, the final pair of socks that I'm currently working on right now is our March Patreon sock yarn. We have a channel where we do vlogs pretty much every other day and there's a membership where you can get a sock set with it. We also have mini skeins, but here is the March sock set. I love this one so much. So it came with electric feel, and then it came with, um, oh no, where's the finished sock? I hope I didn't leave that downstairs. I already have one finished. <clears throat> 
and I did end up using Gumdrop for the foot. So anyway, I don't have that with me, but this is the March yarn, and then it has a really pretty Gumdrop for the foot. Shoot. Well, that's a bummer, but you guys kind of get the, the gist of it. Have a really sweet little Pro Guest Keeper here from Lindsay of Simply Serving. I love that. Same thing. Oh, here's Gumdrop. That's what I used for the foot. I think it pairs really nicely together. So I do see another pair of socks that I finished, and this was also using a Patreon sock set. Um, this is the colorway that came with the Patreon sock set. This was Tea Time at Brambley Hedge, and then again we have Scandinavia because I absolutely love that tonal. And this is a brand new pattern coming out by Emily Clausen of Yarn Brary. And this is the Mountain, and this is the Mountain Vista sock pattern. I think she just came out with it yesterday. And these are so much fun to knit. This pattern I feel like looks a little bit more complicated than it is, but for those of you who really love pattern socks, but you don't like a lot of thinking, this does not require a lot of thinking at all. It is so simple, so easy, and very hard to put down these socks. I really loved knitting them and I think I probably will cast on another pair soon with something. Maybe uh, April's Patreon yarn, I'll, I'll do that with one of the tonals. So those are the socks that I have finished recently, very, very recently. And something else that I finished recently is this Birds and Ships Cowl by Caitlin Hunter. I knit four of these. I knit one in pink. Um, I knit one in Ditsy, which is a really pretty, really light, pale uh, turquoise blue. And the pink I used tulle skirt, and then I knit one out of Steel, which is a dark, dark gray-toned navy blue. And then, of course, Antique. You can tell that I really like Antique as I used it in the main color here. I used it in my Oxa sweater, and I knit it in my Birds and Ships cowl. So this is a cowl that I find myself wearing all the time. I like a tighter fitting cowl and this one really hugs your neck very nicely and um, I find myself wearing it inside when I'm a little bit chilly. I definitely wear it out when I go to the terrace, when we go somewhere. I really, really enjoy it. And both of my girls have one and I've made one for my mom. So this is a knit that I recommend highly for spring, fall. It's probably not warm enough for winter if you live somewhere where it's quite cold, but it's perfect um, for the weather that we're having now anyway. And I pretty much have been wearing this since January, February maybe. But I wanted to share that with you because I really could not recommend that pattern more. Um, so the two blankets that I have cast on are, I'm sure you all have seen Kay from the Crazy Sock Lady knitting all of her Jelly Roll blankets, fingering weight, DK weight, and I love her podcast. And I've just been watching her work away on her Jelly Roll blanket until finally I said enough is enough. I have so many minis or so I thought <laughs> that I need to cast one on myself. So this is a pattern by Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears. And I have really fallen in love with this blanket. I'm knitting mine held double stranded just like Kay from Crazy Sock Lady. <laughs> it's hard when you're talking about two Ks at the same time. So I am knitting it held double just like Kay from the Crazy Sock Lady. And I really love the weight that this uh, gives me. The weight is so gorgeous. I am using a size 3.5 millimeter needle, so it's a little bit tighter of a gauge. I think Kay uses a 3.75 millimeter. And I am enjoying this so much. So I started this using scraps. Then I went into my Patreon minis because as I mentioned, we also have a membership that has three mini skeins with it. 
And then I decided, okay, we used to offer a mini skein club for a long time. I stopped doing it. I need to bring it back so that I have more minis. So there are five 20 gram minis and five 10 gram minis that you get monthly. Really great if you're knitting blankets, if you like to do stripes in a sweater, if you like things like this for socks, you can do so many things with minis. So I've been adding them to my Jelly Roll blanket. It's a lot of fun. And right now I am almost finished with a strip. Very, very simple to work on. I think when you first start it, it can be a little bit tedious when you're joining that second row with the first row, just because you don't have a lot of fabric to handle. But once you get like established with that second row and you kind of get the hang and swing of it, it is a very simple project. I also think you can be thrown off a little bit by having to attach constantly. Again, it's not tedious at all. It's very simple, very enjoyable, something you can really easy, easily do while chatting or watching something or just sitting outside and listening to the birds like I do. It's a project that I also have really enjoyed doing out on our terrace. Now, I would not take this somewhere with me as large as it is now, but I think it's a very easy project to be working on. So I have my little basket here of my pre-wound minis because as I said, I don't have scraps anymore for this blanket in particular, but I am using, sometimes I might use a full 10 gram skein. I'm not using a full 20 gram skein, but I also might just use five grams of that 10 gram skein. And then all of my leftover yarns that I have, so the scraps of the scraps then go into this blank, into this basket, which I have started something that I have been pondering starting for a very, very long time. And I've knit two of these already, and that is a cozy memories blanket. So yes, this is super teeny, but those of you who have started a cozy memories blanket or who have knit one in the past, you know that of all the blankets to knit, this is one that is probably the most time consuming. It is knit on quite a small needle. I am using a 2.5 needle or a three millimeter needle, a 2.5 US needle. And I'm using fingering weight yarn for this. So the squares definitely take longer than most blankets, but it is such a joy. I am having so much fun knitting on this blanket and using the scraps of the scraps. And oh yes, there are scraps of the scraps of the scraps. And I think I will magic knot those, add those with a skein of mohair and start either a cozy comfort throw or maybe design a new blanket. I haven't decided yet, but I definitely want to pair those with mohair. And I love blankets. I use my knitted blankets every single day. So I'm enjoying this so much. It's something that I'm trying to work on two squares a day at the least. So I just cast this on two days ago and I am I'm really enjoying it. I think that this is something that will probably grow and pretty quickly. And I think I can definitely imagine this being a summer project for sure. So another blanket that I do want to knit soon is a boucle blanket. I knit this over the winter and I put kits together for this. This was kind of our Christmas blanket. I did six colors. I did Bohemian antique of course, marigold, biscuit, and fern. So I honestly don't think that this needs to be a Christmas blanket. I think it, um, it fits kind of for all times, but I really like the weight of this blanket that I think this could be a very, very nice one to have again in the summers and spring when we're at our bungalow. So I think I want to put together eight to 10 colors for a blanket because I would like it to be a little bit 
larger. This is very comfortable blanket for myself, but I feel like if the girls want to snuggle underneath of it in the evenings or the mornings, it would be really nice uh, for them to have one that they could both snuggle up under. So I have that also brewing in my mind, but that means that I would have four blankets on the needles if I cast on the blanket with the scraps of the scraps of the scraps and then uh, one of these blankets. But I think that's okay. I'm having so much fun knitting lately. I am so happy that the weather is getting warmer and sunnier and I'm able to sit out on the terrace. I really love winter, but I love winter the most when there is snow. It makes me so happy. And we didn't have a lot of snow this year, but we had it kind of sporadically every now and again. And now that it's not here and the sun is coming, we probably had six, seven days of sun this entire winter. I'm very, very happy for the sun to be here and to be able to spend that time outdoors. I've been getting out of the house a lot more, which has felt really good. In fact, today we're going to a new cafe that we discovered. It'll be our second time there. I am very, very much looking forward to probably getting a tasty cappuccino, maybe a slice of cake. I didn't eat anything I was there last time, but I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what they have for cake and uh, just having a relaxing, fun afternoon together with my family. So I hope you've enjoyed watching what I've been knitting lately and uh, maybe you're inspired to cast on a new colorwork sweater. If you've knit one of Lena Samsu's patterns, I would love to know what you've knit um, and if you've enjoyed her patterns because I don't think that the Inga sweater will be the last one that I knit because her patterns are so much fun and I I think I'm going to be casting on actually an all over cabled sweater by Katharina Lindberg uh, next. So maybe you guys will see that in a future podcast. And uh, I look forward to chatting with you at some point later. <laughs> Have a wonderful week uh, ahead. Bye.